Hello, we are the team Intimidators and this is our project number two for the six point buckle design. This is the table of contents. We will do a, an introduction, uh, assumptions, free body diagram, hand calculations, FEA, and some conclusions. The background on safety belts. Um, Obviously, safety belts, safety belts work in conjunction with the airbag of a vehicle to further help protect the driver as, from as much harm as possible in the unfortunate event of a crash. A study of motor sports accidents and drivers in 1967 and before found that virtually none of the drivers involved in accidents in Britain that year were wearing any form of restraint. It was from this point forward that FEI regulations started implementing belt buckles and other types of safety mechanisms in vehicles. The most dangerous part about a, about a vehicle crash is an effect called the submarining effect. Essentially, what this effect does is that it brings, it brings both the driver and the seat forward in the event of a crash just following the, the forces of acceleration. The buckling forces affect the driver in such a way that his entire body from his legs to his upper chest can end up being trapped under the, under the frame of the vehicle. This is why the safety belt and the restraints placed on the seat are important. Like I said, following the fixes, physics of a car crash, uh, the weight of the driver is incremented by a factor of g-forces. The buckles and safety harnesses must be designed with this in mind. As shown here, a four-point safety belt system divides the force so in, to which the driver is subjected by four equal points. Same principle applies to a six point buckle system, which is what we will be studying in this presentation. This is the introduction. The outcomes for this project are to have hand calculations that estimate the value and location of the maximum stress using stress concentration factors, perform finite element analysis to estimate the value and location of the maximum stresses and the one means the stresses and finally optimize the buckle design so that it meets safety safety requirements with the lightest weight possible. Initial assumptions for this project are that we are working with ASTM grade 5 titanium with a yield strength of 880 megapascals, ultimate tensile strength of 950 megapascals, a design safety factor of 1.5 and the density of the titanium is 430 kilograms per meter cubed. The driver's mass is estimated to be about 200 pounds. We convert our values to the metric system to make our calculations a little easier. 100 g's of the force of the load is what the driver is subjected to in the event of this particular crash. As mentioned before, the six buckle system distributes this entire force. From our initial calculations, we find that the minimum diameter for the bolt conne connection is 12.7 millimeters and that the length of the strap is 25.4 millimeters. We define the parameters of our design in this way. We find that the experimental stresses must not exceed 633.3 megapascals. After that, we calculate the force exerted on the driver by using uh, the formula F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. We convert the, the unit of 100 to, to metric units, and then we find that the maximum force is 88,995 newtons. As mentioned before, the force of each buckle divides the, the maximum force 
and uh, here we see that each buckle is subjected to a force of 14,833 newtons. This is uh, the free body diagram for our initial for our initial design. Um, we are estimating that most of the force is subjected to the brace to the bracing at the back of the of the design and because of that we decided to split up the design so that at least in this free body diagram we could show where the forces are being subjected uh, these are um, rough estimates of the force lines that are acting on the buckle as, uh, as we can see here from the back or from the back and to the front side of the design uh, the force lines avoid any any openings within the buckle design and as such the rectangular hole and the circular hole are what force the the forces to be distributed along the body. This is where we begin our hang calculations for stresses. Uh, we begin with a design of the of the driver in the in the driver's seat then we show that the forces are equally distributed. We find the, the values that we mentioned before. And uh, this part right here is where we break down how we are going to analyze our force. Uh, as I mentioned before, we start by separating the back part of our design from the, from the front. And in this middle part, we realize that the forces in the back part of our design are two halves of the same part, which is why we break it down even further into the into the one corner. In order to find the the desired values for our for our design, we started off uh, with the with our design factor. We found the tensile strength divided by the allowable strength by the allowable stress by that uh, and then we found uh, the minimum area that we can use for our design uh, once again our allowable stress is uh, force over area and it comes out to 633.3 megapascals uh, we selected a thickness of uh, 25 centimeters our, our radius is uh, 0 0.125 centimeters uh, and then we proceed to find the area based on the formula uh, thickness times the times the diameter in order to find the diameter based on the area that we found. Uh, our our capital D gave us a a value of 0 0.5934 centimeters. And as we recall from the many charts in the textbook, uh, many of the charts to find the the stress concentration factors require values of of the thickness, capital D, and little d. Uh, from the table that we were using, uh, we found that uh, our concentrated stress factor is uh, 1.5, um, which was the same as the as the initial safety factor. Uh, then we proceeded with the calculations to find that the max that the maximum tensile strength is 950 megapascals, uh, which was the same as the stress allowed. Uh, so for that matter, we realized that we needed to increase to increase the area by at least 1.5 so that our max stress would not surpass the allowable stress which is the calculations that we did here at the bottom. Uh, we found the second area, we got the capital D values, and then we used this, uh, a different table to find our, to find our stress concentration factors. Uh, and then we used the stress concentration factor of 2.2. We found our allow allowable stress of 422.2 megapascals, and as such, we multiplied it by our by our K and we got our max value to be 928.8 megapascals which is less than than the initial maximum stress that we had got. 
Uh, next, we find the tension in the circular hole. Uh, to find the, the tension here, as I mentioned before, we use the charts uh, provided in the textbook. This particular one that we use for the circular hole is uh, from Shigley's Mechanical Engineering 10th edition, table A1512. Um, we found our, our D over W and our H over W to find our, our stress concentration factor. Next, we found the tension in our rectangular hole. Following a similar procedure as in the circular hole, we used uh, a different chart. Uh, in this case, we used table from Appendix A, 15-5. Uh, we found uh, the stress in our rectangle. <coughs> we used uh, the force of each buckle over the area. And then we found that, that our that our that the stress in the rectangle was 633.3 megapascals. We multiply that by our factor of 1.5 and we got 950 megapascals, which brought up a couple of red flags. Um, as we can see here, the safety factor for the circular hole gave us 5.02, and the safety factor for the rectangular hole gave us uh, 0 0.6. We realized that our safety factors were very uh, impossible numbers to realistically achieve. So following those formulas as we were doing uh, is how our maximum stresses of the rectangular hole ended up equaling the initial ultima tensile strength. Uh, because of this it made us realize that we were doing some calculations or assumptions erroneously. Uh, so we decided to optimize the design. We decided to try a new width, a new length, and um, my apologies, that should say a new diameter. Uh, this is uh, the initial design that we did with a, with a smaller hole. Uh, this is the free body the diagram. Because of software constraints and admittedly time constraints, uh, this is what we were able to produce for our presentation and for this particular optimization as well as the two following ones. This is the free body diagram for our design with a with a different width. And this is a different option that we did for our original design with a new length. Finally, we get to our finally optimized model. Uh, in this model, you can see that the, the, that the von Mises, Mises stress, my bad, show us that the maximum tensile strength occurs at the, at the rounded corners of, our, of the whole of the rectangle. We can also observe that on the back end of our, of our design, some force is concentrated on it. Whereas, within the circular hole, it seems as, as though very, very little or almost no stresses are being applied. Again, the Von Mises stress show a pulling, pulling to the right motion, which uh, is exemplified in the corners of our design, where the red area is located at, showing that that is the area with the most stress subjection. The primary challenge we encountered in this project was really coming to an understanding of what was going on. It was impossible to continue the project without a thorough understanding of how the forces affected the buckles in each step leading to the next, especially because in order to get to the next step, we had to figure out what the previous step not only gave us as a value, but what it meant in terms of our design. Using the CAD software was another big challenge. Between not all of us being able to know and handle the same CAD software, some of us were using um, SolidWorks, some other ones tried, another person tried using an X. Personally, I, I ended up using Illustrator, and uh, that's where most of our values came from, from um, 
from a team member's skills and inventor to produce the, the design and to produce the, the finite element analysis. We thank you so much for your time and we hope that you enjoyed this presentation. This was for Dr. Calvin Stewart's class, Mechanical Design, in Fall 2017. Thank you so much.